Blog Talk Radio. What's up? WH Radio. Wrestling Heads Radio. You got skits. I'm along with Chris. I'm along with Oscar and Toby. What's going on, gentlemen? What's going on? Today we have a special guest. We got OVW champion, Jamin Olavencia. What's going on, Jamin? What's going on, guys? How you doing today? Everything's good over here. Great. Sounds sounds exciting on your end. <laughs> <laughs> For those um, that are not familiar with Extreme. Jamin, uh, Jamin, you want to give give the fans a rundown? A rundown of who I am? Yes, sir. Well, my name is Jamin Olivencia. I'm from Buffalo, New York. I came from a company originally called ESW, that is Empire State Wrestling. Basically, long story short, at the age of 17, I started got my ass going, decided I'm going to do this shit full-time, and ever since then, I've never looked back. So now I'm the OVW heavyweight champion. I've been to uh, four different countries, and uh, I'm enjoying life as we speak. Definitely, man. Uh, today we're going to uh, go over uh, Jamin's career, uh, talk to him about uh, what he's got coming up. Um, but let's go ahead and start this off. Um, Chris, you want to start with the first uh, question? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, I have a question about um, developmental. OVW was affiliated with the WWE until 2008, and then it became developmental for TNA in 2011. How much of a difference is there between the two companies? And differences, I mean, which of the two companies had a hands-on, more hands-on approach or just differences in training style? Uh, you know, it, uh, actually, it's funny because the, it, it hasn't really changed style-wise, which is really – Good for which could be good for TNA, I would say, because uh, at the time when WWE was here, we had Al Snow uh, leading the classes. He was leading the the shows. He was writing the shows, yeah. uh, and we 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 were being taught a certain way of of how to perform in this business, but most importantly, yeah. how to do business, how to make money. And uh, yeah. at the time when WWE was here. We had we had that opportunity, you know. Uh, it, it was different, it, you know. It was a lot different in the sense that uh, for guys like me who were non-contracted talent, it was harder to get on television. It was harder to get a, an opportunity to to be with those guys who were under contract. Like right now, the difference the, the difference would be TNA. There's only so many people signed by TNA, and they're down on a, on our show, and and we're not yeah. contracted talent, but it's our show. So, so yeah. it's different in that sense, you know. But as far yeah. as the training and the and the psychology and stuff, it's pretty much the same. You know, business is business, and uh, if you know, in my opinion, if TNA is smart, they'll keep uh, they'll keep around OVW and and uh, really let that one uh, bloom because uh, OVW. I mean, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's 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 a sick place, and a lot of the guys that you see today in WWE, John Cena, Randy Orton, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> CM Punk, Santino Morella, Dolph Ziggler, you we can go down the list all day. But these guys are top superstars, and they're top superstars for a reason. Yeah, uh, names, na- the names go on and on. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I couldn't even give you a list. I mean, everyone by, by this point, you're watching everyone on television that's been in OVW. Yep. yep. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like uh, Batista. Yeah, just like you said, the list can go on and on. Like I could sit here and just take on a lot of guys who became stars that came from from that. Uh, that organization. Lesnar, Shel- Shelton, Lesnar and Shelton, Bobby I mean, Lashley. I mean, I have a lot of their old stuff on DVD. I mean, you you put on any second of any show. I mean, it's, it's stars, and even today, or you know, it, it, it's it's I, I like it. I mean, it's 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 good it's good shit. I mean, people need to get on it. Hey, yeah. it's the way it is, man. <laughs> we... <clears throat> yeah. So um... yeah. I have a question for you, uh, Jamin. Um, so, um, were you a wrestling fan growing up, and which wrestlers did you look up to when you were when you when you were young? 
You know, this question is always interesting to me. Uh, yeah, I've, I was, I've been watching wrestling since, shit, the age of three probably, four, you know, whatever I can remember up to. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'll never forget the day I was watching, I believe it was, it was Macho Man and Hulk Hogan doing some type of mega powers thing. I was a kid at the time. But I remember watching them, and I knew instantly, I knew instantly, this is what I'm going to do. This is who I am. I almost, I, almost, I almost defined myself at that time. This is what I am. This is who I am. So, uh, and it's interesting because, it, you know, here I am today doing it. So it, it, it was, it, it, I always knew it was something that was, it was already inside of me. It was almost, it's in my blood. I was born to do it. Uh, but as far as, like, wrestlers growing up that I looked up to and, you know, you know, that inspired me, the the fucked up thing is, guys, you know, I always looked at myself as as something and then and then built off of that. Almost, I almost had this character of who I was when I was a child. Uh, and it goes all the way down to five years old and, and to where I am today. I had this character. I had this idea of what I was going to be and how I was going to do it. And that in itself was what inspired me. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't all the the guys uh, that I was watching. It was cool to watch them. You know, I like. Sure, I was a fan of Shawn Michaels. He 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 captivated me. You know, I was a fan of Macho Man Randy Savage. He captivated me. But there was nothing that. It wasn't like oh, this person is is inspiring me to do what I want to do today. It was me inspiring myself really. So it was it was it was it's it's interesting. You know, it's interesting how um it, it's been working out for me in that sense because here I am today doing exactly what. I imagined I was doing at a young age. Yeah, definitely. Um, Oscar, did you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, now you're currently the OVW World cha- Champion. Um, there's a list that who has been champion in the past, like Leviathan, we all know him as Batista right now. Um, the prototype, we know him as John Cena. How do you think your name is on that list? And you can and you can probably tell yourself 20 years from now, wow, my name's on that list. So. What's your thoughts of that? Oh, you know, it's 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 cool, but it's also not a surprise to me, you know. And it's never, and guys, as long as you know me, as long as you hear me talk right now, and you see me in the future on television sometime in the near future, you're gonna always see that there's there's it, it that stuff doesn't phase me. It's always like, okay, great, I'm on that list. But you know what? I knew I was gonna be on that list. I knew I'd be in this category with all these people that we perceive as as megastars. And don't get me wrong, these guys are megastars. It's, it's great to have my name, you know, on a list with these people. But at the same time, that's what I've always expected out of myself, anyway. So it's not, it's not, it's not like, oh wow, I'm on this list, or I'm going to look back and say, oh well, I was on the list. You know, it doesn't work like that with me. It's just, um, this is what I am, and this is what I'm doing, and then it only grows from there. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I guess in a in a sense, it's cool. But what the fuck? I'm cool anyway, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, Toby, did, did, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, who was your favorite guy to wrestle so far? Like, as far as who did you have the best chemistry with in the ring and you and you felt like, man, I put on a good match with this person and I, and I, want, I could wrestle with him another 20 matches? Shit, man. Uh, there's a lot of guys that... I've had the opportunity to be in the ring with and uh, be able to perform on that level with. Uh, there's so many guys, and that's a, that's a list within itself. Uh, just to name a few, there's this guy named Muhammad Ali Baez. He's phenomenal to work in the ring with. Uh, there's a, another gentleman by the name of Mike Mondo. I'm sure you guys know very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's one of the hard, I'm telling you, he's one of the best out there. It doesn't get any better than him. But uh, he, he's great. Uh, there's so oh shit, man. There's such a list of guys. I, I feel bad if I na- start naming people because whoever may be listening to this, that's one of my friends, may be like, well, what about me? You know, it, it, there's so many guys that are so good on that level. Uh, one guy, though, that really particularly sticks out to me and that has, has changed me uh, for the better in my career as a performer is a gentleman by the name of Joey Matthews, or you might know him as Joey Mercury. Uh, he... He really taught me. He really taught me a lot. He taught me how to build a match properly, how to how to really listen to your audience and not memorize shit. To be a real professional in the ring, and uh, I, I owe a lot to that guy because he's he's phenomenal. He's 
he's just absolutely he's the best in my opinion he's the best in the business and he's not even wrestling but he's got he's one, he's got one of the best minds ever so it's been a blast working with that guy in particular yeah definitely um Chris did you want to go ahead yeah and bef- before I ask a question it seems like everyone puts Mercury over I mean everybody from top to bottom whatever company it seems that he he's loved he's loved by everybody. Um, yeah, man. But I have, I, I mean, it, it, it's crazy. He, he's, he's really. It just seems like it's genuine. People really like the guy. But um, my question is, who is or was that one person in your life that believed in you since day one when you said, "This is what I want to do. Uh, I want to be a professional wrestler." You're talking in the business. Either or. or family or business or both. Well, shit. You know, if I had to, if I well, if. If we're talking out of the business, I'd say my mother. My mother, uh, I told her I wanted to do this at a young age. I, I'm a twin, actually. My twin brother was a was a phenomenal singer. He uh, he got uh, he got offered uh, big deals back in the day uh, with record labels, and uh, he turned them down. And that really said something. You know, that really told me something about him. But uh, regardless, my mother um, gave him a lot of attention and. Uh, and really strive to make sure he was getting his career going at a young age. So he started at the age of four. So, you know, from the age of four to like 13, he was, he was the main focus. And, uh, in the shadows, there was always me that, uh, always wanted to be a professional wrestler. But you know what? Every single day I told my mother that she would always ask me, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, a wrestler, well, what about a police officer? What about, what about a, uh, a doctor? Or, you know, what, a, you know, it's like, no, I want to be a pro wrestler. So she, she was always kind of, like, weary about it, but I tell you what, man, every single time I got up every single morning for school, she would always tell me, Jamin, you can be anything you want to be. If you want to be a pro wrestler, then go get it. And she would almost say that almost on a daily basis to me. And I feel, you know, I feel like she, I feel like having a parent that supports you on that level has gotten me mentally prepared for what I want to do and, and, and also inspire me and, and get me going for that. So I, on that level, in that sense, I would give it to my mother. But uh, I think I think there's a lot of guys who, who in the business, look at me and, and, and have been sticking by me for one, for, for shit since day one. And, and one, there, a gentleman by the name of Rip Rogers, I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. Yeah, he's my trainer. Absolutely. He's, he's, who, he's who really taught me how to – how to become a pro wrestler. He it was really him that taught me everything. Another gentleman, Al Snow, he stuck by me, you know. Uh some people yep. have their opinions uh on whatever, but I tell you what, that guy's a good dude and uh he's he's taught me a lot about this business and he stuck by me since day one. He believed in me. He was the only one that gave me a chance when it when when it was unheard of that non contracted were getting non contracted people were getting T V time in OBW. I, I I think it's I think it's interesting to always tell my story now because back then in OBW, um, from two thousand and four and to, you know, wherever we're at now, when WWE was there, it was it was so hard to break in. It was so hard to to get to get your opportunity and get a shot. Um uh, on television, or and you know, Al Al saw something in me. He saw that I was getting over with the fans, and he ended up throwing a fucking tax straps on me. And uh, this gentleman by the name of T.J. Dalton, and it was it was interesting because, you know, the, when you're not getting that, when when it's hard to get those opportunities that it is, and someone believes in you that much, you say to yourself, well, shit, you know, I am, I am worth something around here. So uh, it was cool. Those two people in particular have stuck by me. Uh, you know, as far as my, I look at them as mentors and trainers and and friends, so those are good people. I, I would say that. And then there's and then I'll, I'm, amongst them, there's a list full of guys who, who 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 encourage me every day. We all encourage each other, really. So. Yeah, I, I I'm definitely familiar with Rip, I mean, obviously I was not, but Rip, Rip Rogers. I'm familiar with with Portland days. Um, I got a lot of his old stuff as well on DVDs. Yeah, I, I was always had a fan of his stuff too back in the day. Yeah, he's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Jamie, I have a question. I'm not sure if you get this question a lot, but if you weren't a professional wrestler, what would Jamie Olavinsky be doing today? Tough question. Tough question. When, especially when it's been instilled, it almost seems like it's been instilled in me. But you know, if I was, if I were to be anything, I'd like to be a uh, like a spiritual teacher or some type of. Uh, 
some type of motivational speaker, I think. I think I would like to, to help the, the world in some way, you know, from negative energy, from being negative, from, you know, from, you know, from being, letting yourself down all the time, you know, you get, get, get people out of the habit of thinking like that and actually show them another level of life. I think that's what I would be doing if I wasn't a pro wrestler, or, you know, but that's, well, you know, that's a fucked up question anyway, because, <laughs> you know, it's not happening right now. So maybe someday that will happen after wrestling, but, you know, there's wrestling. So here I am. I'm doing it and I'm happy doing it. I'm I'm definitely glad to see that. Dude. I'm definitely looking forward to um to uh your show coming up in August, Wrestling Cares, which we'll get into in a bit. But um let's move on real quick. Um Oscar with the next question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I want to talk about your um your matches you had in WWE. Uh your tag match you had back in 05. Uh, it wasn't a tag match against Val Venus and Viscera. Was I believe was yeah. Heat. Heat right? was that? Yeah. And yep, he also had appeared on WWE Superstars against Kurt Hawkins and uh, Vance Archer back in 2010. But my real question I want to ask you, like, how was that experience being having those matches in WWE with a bigger crowd and a, and a bigger venue? You know, to me, it's it's uh, for me personally, it's not it's not too different. Not really. You know, it's in my opinion, what I would say to anybody is when you're when you're dealing with crowds like that or an audience like that. I would say slow down in the ring because it, it, it takes, you know, versus wrestling in front of 500 people, you know, you're wrestling in front of, you know, 10,000 people, 15,000 people. So, you know, it, it, it feels different in that sense. And, uh, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, it's not, it, you know, it, it, it's, it, I know it probably sounds like I'm on repeat here, but once again, it, to be there and doing the thing that I knew I was doing anyway, it's never, it was never any, it never felt any different. In fact, I felt even more confident when I was there and I was always on a roll, you know, and I've always gotten great feedback. So it, 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 it was a good time. I'll tell you that to go out there in front of a sea of people is a completely different energy. And, and that's, and that's the real thing that, that that keeps you going. That's the real thing that keeps you energetic about it and enthusiastic about it is the fact that when you go out there, you're feeling this audience. You're you're, you're getting their emotions, tons of emotions, and and to feel that all at one time is is pretty overwhelming and and, and great. It's 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 a really positive feeling. You know, some people get nervous when they go out there. I don't. You know, I just go out. I just do it. I do what I've been. You know doing in my head for the you know past 27 years you know whatever but uh it, so it's it's cool man you know it's, it's good it's easy and it's fun yeah i'm glad you enjoy that i mean um hope you um in the future you know you experience that experience again so yeah thank you yeah toby did you want to go ahead yeah sure i got i'm gonna i'm gonna start asking this question to Damon, you're going to be the first uh, to answer this. So I think I'm going to start doing this with all the hardcore, you know, wrestling guys that grew up watching wrestling. But this is going to be my question. Uh, yep. Ultimate Warrior or Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Ultimate Warrior, man. <laughs> Are you oh, kidding really? me? I was, you know, I tell you what. I was a, uh, and I, I had a lot of, I, you know, I, I had, dude, I was like one of the most hated kids in school because when everyone loves Stone Cold Steve Austin, I did not like him. <laughs> you know, I, I pre- he, he's an amazing worker, but I mean, in terms of when you were a fan, and I was like, no, fuck this guy. This guy sucks, man. He throw middle fingers. Let's fuck this guy. He's, he's he sucks. So anyway, I used to shit on Austin all the time. But uh, same thing went for Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior type thing. I was a big Macho Man fan. So I was always, I was always, you know, when the mega powers broke up and there were issues between the two, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going with Randy here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on his side. So, uh, but uh, no, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan's cool. I've always enjoyed Hulk Hogan, but I was never a like major Hulkamaniac. I was never a Hulkamaniac. I admit it. And I have a you know, I. <laughs> shit, I probably shouldn't say that to his face, but I might just Hulk say Hulk to his face. Hulk Hogan? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually had a, a very pleasant talk with him before. He's a very good guy. Very, very down there as human being. He's a good guy. Great, great energy about that guy. Great energy. But um, <laughs> no, I'm a, you know, I was never a Hulkamaniac. I, I just, I liked it. You know, I, I guess I liked playing him in, in the game WrestleMania for Nintendo. 
But uh, that that was the extent of me and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so I was a big Ultimate Warrior guy. He was freaking crazy. Are you kidding me? Like, how cool is that? I, you got a guy that's completely losing his mind on television. That's awesome. <laughs> I want to ask you, back on a question that Toby asked you, since Ultimate Warrior is going to be on the new WWE 2K14 uh, game, are you excited about that? Yeah, you know, I think it's cool that uh, – him and WWE, the partnership, whatever whatever it is now, I, I think it's great that they have worked out something. They come back together. You know, that I, I, I think it's just, I think it's important when there was guys like that that made your company money, regardless of what happened and, you know, vice versa. It, you know, no one knows the real story, right? We only know what you're told, but no one knows the real story. So to see that, all, whatever all those issues were, to come together now in the future and uh, have, have a piece there, I think it is ultimately awesome, and I think it's. I, I'm happy for him, and I'm happy for the WWE because they're capitalizing off of a, a, a what soon to be another big money maker for them. So they're just on a roll. They're on top of it. They really are. Yeah, definitely, Chris. Yeah, I have a question about. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously, TNA and OVW is obviously on. You know that that you watch probably the majority of but is there another promotion out there that you keep an eye out either being in the United States or overseas I mean do you is there another promotion that sparks your interest week after week or once a month you, you know I admit I, I don't watch much wrestling um, I uh, you know I'll, I'll flick on WWE once in a while uh, just to keep up with their product same thing with TNA I'll take a look at it uh, Ring of Honor I don't I don't get a chance to see it because it's not on my uh, television here in Kentucky, so I don't get a chance to really catch up on that. Uh, that's why I really don't know much about these ROH guys either. You know, like I hear all this about this and this about this person, that person, but I don't, I don't really know them. You know, I, I've met all these guys too, but I just don't, I don't really watch it. So, uh, no, man, I, the answer is no. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't really watch any other promotions or anything. Now, if someone asks me to watch their work, I'll most certainly do that. But other than yeah. that, no. Yeah, I didn't know if there was just one guy that you would, you know, just keep tabs on or something like that, like out there, or not just promotions, but more or less guys like that you're familiar with or who you think might be the basically who you who you're a fan of. I don't know if there's people out there. I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Colt Cabana. I think he's yeah. brilliant. Well, I watch everybody. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I watch him regularly, <laughs> but but I just think he's. I think as a performer, the guy knows what he's doing. He's solid. He uh, he's a smart businessman, and uh, God bless him because I, I think yeah. I think he's I think he's a solid solid performer. I really do. Yeah, him him and Mercury are, are like what I say about Mercury. Phil Cabana is another guy you never hear anything bad about. Yeah, no, yeah, dude, I mean, yeah, dude, it, it's crazy. Like, and I go back to Mercury, man. The guy's insane, man. He's so good. He's so good at what he does. And I think unless you knew him personally or if you got in the ring with him, you would know what I mean. There's just there's a flow about that guy. He just knows she just knows what's up. <laughs> so All right. Uh Jamin, this next question I actually ask all of our guests just to see uh you know, if they were Vince McMahon. If you had to choose three wrestlers to start your own promotion, the first three guys you would hire in your own promotion, who would they be? If I had to hire three guys, if I was a music man and I started my own promotion, yeah, you get to hire the first three guys to start your promotion. Let's see here. I would give it. I'd give it. I'd give it to Joey Mercury, Cole Cabana, <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see here. I really, man. There's so many guys. There's a guy. There's a gentleman in OVW who I really like right now. His name is Michael Hayes. He. Uh, Good friend of mine, freaking good human being, good energy. Uh, a short story about this gentleman is he uh, he was in the war in Iraq and uh, he lost his leg and, and now and you know now he's in, now he got himself he you know he survived it and now he's in uh, wrestling uh, and he has a fake leg and he performs on it and it's just it's just inspiring to see a human being like that and I'm telling you something about this guy this this guy is going to be a huge money maker for either WWE or TNA and mark my words mark my words to this day he's going to be a huge money maker in the future his name is Michael Hayes very talented person but I I would definitely I'd I'd bring him on board 
definitely. Uh, those are your three. Um, not a bad um, list there. Uh, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's only three people, so, you know, I guess if I'm only in this company, I'm starting pretty pretty, yeah, pretty strong. Get a couple good entertainers, and, uh, and then we'll work our way from there. <laughs> you, gotta, you, you, you have to add yourself You have to add yourself to that list, too. Make it four. Well, fuck, I, I own the company. I own the company. Yeah. I'm already at it. I'm already, I'm, already, I'm already writing myself in the TV, so right. don't yeah, worry about it. <laughs> yeah, he can definitely do what he wants. To. Yep, yeah, that's right. I'm the Vince man, remember? That's right. Uh, Oscar, did you want to go ahead? Yeah. Um, usually I ask every, every guest the same question. Um, let's just say there's a time machine. Let's just say there is actually a time machine. Um, if you could go back in time, where would you go and who would you like to wrestle from any era? Um, I think I'd go back to the 80s. Yeah, you go back and, to the 80s. Uh, I'd, I'd go back to the 80s. I'd go back to the early 80s before I was born. <laughs> and uh, okay. I Terrible. think I'd like to wrestle. I'd, I'd like to wrestle Rip Rogers. Oh. I'd like to. I'd, I'd like to wrestle him because he's fucking really good too. <laughs> he's really good. And he's and he's crazy as hell, and he's really good. But uh, you got natural. Yeah. You got you got natural heat. Yeah, we do got natural. Yeah, yeah, he does get natural. He he he, he does have natural heat for sure. <laughs> he's crazy with the crowd, but yeah, with the crowd, but, he got it. Yeah, he's good, man. I'm telling you, watch some Rip Rogers shit if you ever get a chance. He's just a nutcase. He's awesome. But uh, yeah, I heard a lot him, about you know, him. Huh? No, I said I heard a lot about him. So, yeah, man, everyone everyone loves that guy. Everyone loves that guy. Anyone anyone who's a big star knows Rip Rogers, trust me. Rip Rogers has done a lot for them and he's done a lot for this business right now because he's really he's really teaching a lot of guys coming up. I mean he's taught what you see on the WWE roster already, but I mean I'm talking the guys come he's still doing it and that's the point. Like there's still people coming up and uh it's it, Rip Rogers the man. He, he's just a, he's 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 you know what makes him good is he's a really good teacher. He he teaches you stuff that that it's hard to to teach to actually teach. So so he's just really good at explaining things and uh, also conditioning you to think a certain way. And uh, and I tell you what, man, he doesn't do he doesn't do blow up drills. He doesn't he doesn't do stupid stuff. He he literally teaches you how to wrestle, and he'll make you do that for like an hour, like wrestling. And and it's cool because you get so good at it. And so anyway. Rip Rogers, hands down. That's cool. At first, I thought you were gonna pick Macho Man, but hey, I can't. No, nah, you know, argue fuck with it. Rogers. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, Macho Man. You know, whatever. If he, if I saw him back in the day, I might wrestle him on a house show. But right away, <laughs> <there, laughs> it comes to the mind is uh, is Rip Rogers, and I guess that's because of my personal relationship I have with him. You know, so right. I guess I'm a little biased. <laughs> Toby. Okay, Jamin, I got a, I got a question for you here. That um, I now that you're OVW champion, I really want to find out like what do you, how far do you desire to go in the business? And what I mean by that is, you know, Chris Jericho wrote in his in his book that you know all, all he ever wanted to be growing up was the Intercontinental Champion because Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was Intercontinental Champion, and when he won the title. If his career would have end, ended right there, he would have been he would have been completely satisfied um, with his career. Um, how far do you want to go in the business? As far as do you want to be WWE champion, or do you, you know, what do you what do you want to win? Yeah, absolutely. I think being WWE champion would be the the pinnacle of of success, or if you want to call that success, you know, I think I, for me doing that would be would be awesome, and and I and I absolutely see myself doing it because. There's no one like me right now, and that's something everyone's going to find out real soon. There's nobody like me. Now, you can watch me, and you can say, well, I disagree, but when you watch me in person, when you watch me live, when you feel me live, I guarantee you, you're going to walk away with a completely different experience. You're going to say, holy shit, that's that's like its own entity, and uh and I just to see myself on that level. And I think when I get to the WWE and I become WWE champion, I think 
everyone is going to be saying, holy shit, this guy's the real deal. So, yeah, WWE champion is the top, man. I think whenever you're in any company, you always strive to be the top. That's how I felt when I've been in OVW. Uh, if, uh, if TNA is interested in picking me up here soon or WWE, I know, I know both companies are interested, uh, then, you know, whoever one I go with, uh, I will just dominate. <laughs> and you're going to watch it happen. You're going to get to witness it happen. So that's what I'd say to that. I have a question, Jamie. I don't know if you're allowed to answer one, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Uh, sure. First of all, TNA gut check. Why were you never chose chosen to be part of uh, the TNA gut check? And is TNA gut check real? Because out of all the guys and girls that have been, you know, most of them uh, that were part of the TNA gut check have been either released from the company. So I just want to know, like, how come they didn't pick you when you're the OVW champ? And, you know, is it real? Well, yeah, it is real, number one. Uh, number two, I think uh, I think in terms of people getting picked, it was never it was never it was never a decision that was in someone's hands. I think I think or like it wasn't in, for example, like Al Snow was talent relations at the time, but I don't think it was really in Al Snow's hands. Uh, to pick a gut check guy. And I think also with me, I don't think gut check is a way to introduce me. Now, I, now I'm now i saying that now, and then I don't know if gut check still exists or not, but you might, you know, who knows, you might see me on it freaking next month, who knows. But uh, I just don't think, uh, I, and I knew when it came out, I just, it was funny because it, it was a thought that never connected with me. I, like, it just never connected with me. I was like, oh, TNA gut check, there's a thing called TNA gut check, like, so I see myself doing this, and I was like, not really. You know, like, I don't I don't see myself doing it. Now, if I did do it, uh, it's going to be something completely awesome <laughs> than what you've been seeing. It's, it's I, I, I promise you that. I'll make it freaking awesome. But, uh, you know, I never got the call for it. And, quite, you know, I, I, I've always been on a different relationship with, with TNA anyway on that level. It's never been like, oh, maybe we can bring you in gush at, like, you know, we already, we already discussed ideas of how I was going to get in at one point. And, uh, you know, at that time I was actually going out of uh, the country. So I didn't want to, uh, I couldn't pursue, I couldn't pursue it at the time. But, uh, so I think it's just really where the right place and the right time to bring Jamie and Olivencia in that company is, uh, and the same thing goes with WWE. Definitely. Uh, Chris, did you want to go ahead? Yeah, I mean, this is ob- an obvious question because, you definitely have a future in emotional speaking, no doubt about it. But because uh, I'm, I'm I'm hyped up right now anyway about it. But does my question is being in uh, OVW, does TNA do a good job uh, to to keep the morale up for the OVW roster to say you know anytime kid you know you're you're we're gonna call you up or or, or is it mostly just OVW guys uh, well, Keep you keeping you going, or, or or do they have a hands-on approach, TNA, or is it mostly? Open? I guess you could say yes, they do. And uh, it, I mean, if we're talking, because Al Snow's there, he's there a lot. I mean, he's there yeah. every week doing TV. So sure, there's a. Um, it's always nice to have someone there that knows what they're doing, so that you can yeah. that can keep you on your toes, keep you motivated. Um, but for me, what keeps what keeps me motivated at OVW, what keeps me, you know, because OVW, here's the thing with OVW, and a lot of people uh, don't realize this. Um, when when WWE pulled out in 2008, it was left with just us non-contracted guys. Yeah. And there was a little core of us that stayed, and you know, we we had this, we had huge houses, and then it started dwindling slowly by like 2009. We almost had, I remember TV, I remember going to TV and it was like 20 people in the crowd at one point. And it was just like so, it, you know, it. there was a point where it's like, shit, you know, are we doing this? Are we, you know, we know we're worth something, but it's just nothing's happening here. Like, you know, maybe we're not. And, you know, there was a time where you, we felt down and then there, one day we said, fuck it, let's rally up. Let's get together, guys. Let's let's make this, let's make this our business. Just, it, it, it's not worried about WWE. Let's not worry about getting the WWE. It's not worried about getting the TNA. Let's not worry about this or that. Let's worry about just making this company a success. In 2010, we freaking blew that motherfucker up. It was packed every week. Now, now every week at OVW, you know, we're drawing 200 plus, and uh, we have these Saturday night specials once a month, every Saturday. All our TVs build up to the Saturday night special, and it's a full house every single time. So now it, it, it's really uh, it's. It, that's what motivates us. It, it, I think the fact that we 
we were able to rally up when it was time to rally up and, and kick some ass. And we, we do that every single time we go out there. Uh, I shit, I know I do. And, you know, I know that I know the group of guys that stuck with me do. So, you know, and whoever's coming up in OVW has to learn fast. They have to learn how to do this. And, uh, it's kind of our own little, it's our own little world, you know, and it, I'm proud, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it because it's a great company. Yeah. Uh, you know, if if I recommend anybody, if they're ever in Louisville, check out OVW. You go to OVW show, you 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 know you're at a good professional wrestling show. And I use that word strictly professional because it's it's good, it's as good as it gets, really. It is, you know. But that's my so opinion. That basically, so basically, hmm? that, that that three that three year um, in limbo that OVW wasn't it was in between uh, TNA and WWE was probably like a godsend. I guess you, you know, got it, you guys it was, it was the band yeah. together. Yeah, it was a tough time. It was definitely a tough time because, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, a lot of us were like, well, shit, do we move to Florida now? What do we do? You know, for me it was different because yeah. the week that WWE pulled out was the week I I became a father. My daughter was born. So, uh, you know, it, it was like, oh, shit, well, I can't just get up and move to Florida now. You know, yeah. uh, if I didn't have a daughter, it might be different. But, you know, so I, I, I decided, you know what, I'll stick around. At the time, Joey Mercury was still around. He wasn't under contract with WWE, so he he stuck with us. He helped he helped groom us. He helped groom me personally. You know, I, I got to I got to work with him for eight months straight, and and it was a, and it was such a great experience because we ended up we ended up doing something that we didn't think we could. Well, we ended up doing something that we 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 pulled together and did, I should say, and that's make OVW money, a lot of money. <laughs> so yeah. it, it, to be a part of that is uh, to me. Uh, an accomplishment in itself, um, and, and there's a great group of guys that did it that I did it with. So, like a band of brothers, basically. Yeah, man. Yeah. So it's been it's been cool. You know, it, it really has. It's been pretty cool. Oscar. Yeah, I want to ask him uh, a, a wrestling cares question. Um, you're going against Adam Cole in the event over here in LA. Um, my question to you is, what you know about Adam Cole so far? Ooh. I know nothing about Adam Cole. I, I know that when I, I know that I met him when I was there last time. I hung out with him. I got hot dogs with him. Uh, so <laughs> I know him outside of wrestling. <laughs> but I don't know anything about Adam Cole as the wrestler. I don't know how good he is. I hear he's really good. But, I, you know, I know nothing about it. I don't really uh, – and it's funny because I, I don't know who I was talking to before I started this uh, – Interview. When that was I was me. Him, I said, you know, I. Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> What's your name again? I'm sorry. I got. I get all the names mixed up. Uh, so but, uh Yes. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Cool, man. We're on the same page now. But uh, anyway, no, I. Uh, I was telling him. I, I said, you know, I really don't. I really don't watch these guys before I wrestle them, or I, I just don't. You know, I, I don't. To me, that's not. To have a pre, pre thought about this person doesn't. Uh, I feel like it, it could hurt you. Then you know, I'd rather get the I'd, ra- I'd rather get to see him that day because that's all that matters anyway. Is that day when it comes and uh, be able to perform with him and kick ass. And believe me, I know uh, I've heard good things about him, so that tells me you know what, I'm fucking damn good too. So when the time when to combine that, we're gonna make something great happen that day. So definitely expect that from us. Real quick, yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> go ahead, Oscar. No, I was gonna say I, I you know you're gonna hear more because. Um, I did met the guy. He's a pretty cool dude. I I seen him a couple of times already live, and um, I, you can see it. Yeah, no, Toby does not like this guy. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I figured that out. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, like I said, he he's a cool ass dude. I drink a beer with him. He's, he's a cool ass dude. So um, I hope you guys have a cool ass match when I see you guys when you come over here in L.A. Yeah, thanks. We will. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna steal the show. I guarantee it. I actually <laughs> um want to mention. Uh, are you going to be in town here in um, in uh, in uh, Cali on August ninth? Uh, nope, I'll be in the sixteenth uh, all the way till that Monday. So. so I was going to say, if you're going to be here on the ninth, uh, you can. I don't know. I don't know if you actually want to go check out the. Have you? Ever, I'm pretty sure you have heard of uh, pro pro um. Pro Wrestling Gorilla, Pro Wrestling right? Gorilla. I've heard of it. You know, I heard that's a big company to go to out there. 
Uh, I've never, uh, you know, never performed with them or anything. I don't know anything about them. But uh, I hear that's the place to be. Yeah, if I was there earlier, I would definitely check it out. Unfortunately, I won't be in town on the 9th. So uh, I guess whenever that's meant to be, it'll, it'll be meant to be. And uh, maybe maybe these guys will reach out to me and, and book me on one of their shows because that's, that's probably the biggest thing that they won't regret out of me, that's for sure. So. Yeah, I was going to say you can come check out Adam Cole since you guys are going against each other, um, which is going to be on August 17th, Saturday night. Uh, Wrestling Cares event is going to uh, be a big show. You got Adam Pierce is going to be there versus Willie Mack, Jenny Gargano versus... Drake Younger, Adam Cole against Jamin Olavencia, uh, B Boys against Kyle Matthews, uh, Ma- uh, Matt Hardy's going to be there. Uh, who else? Uh, Oscar, I know Mr. Sorry. Sorry. Can- Candice Michelle is going to be hosting the show, right? Yeah. yeah. And general admission tickets are $15. VIP front row tickets are 25 bucks. If you go to uh, SummerSlam Access, you get 50% off. Tickets, uh, it's a benefit event, so like it's a must, must uh, be there. So, uh, me and Oscar are going to be there, and hopefully, we get Toby to go too. So, uh, we'll be part of the press list. So, uh, we'll definitely be meeting you, uh, Jamin. Awesome, I'll be looking for, yeah, and Toby, bring your ass down because if you have so much hate for Adam Cole, then I need to hear it from you in the audience that night. And I'll make sure to acknowledge it. <laughs> oh, he will. Okay, he will. Cool. Trust me. He will. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm the idiot that's yelling fuck Adam Cole at every PWG event. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I've actually never – I'm actually the only wrestling heads person that's never met Adam Cole personally because I want to, like – I don't want to develop any kind of personal relationship and go with, oh, you know, <laughs> sure. this guy's actually yeah. pretty all right. I don't want to – I want to fucking hate yeah, the guy. Yeah, so. yeah, no, no. You're, yeah, you don't want to fuck it up. I understand. I understand. <laughs> Keep that. Keep it. Keep it. Keep it where it's at. It's no need. No need to meet the guy. No need to fuck Adam Cole. Yeah. <laughs> you know? They'll all be talking to Adam Cole after the show, and I'm like, and I just walk away. I'm like, you okay, guys yeah, don't have fun. This. this is the difference. With why? See, Adam Cole was on this show twice, so that's why you know I show respect to all the guys that take out their time to be on the show. So you know what I mean? That's his yeah. thing. And Adam Cole's a great wrestler too. So I'm definitely looking forward to the match. Uh, again, it's going to be Saturday, August 17th. Uh, it's uh, the event's called Wrestling Cares Association. Um, sure. Definitely looking forward to it. Uh, Adam Cole versus Jamin Olavencia is going to be big. Uh, also, uh, Jamin was also telling me on August 3rd, he'll be going one-on-one for the OVW Championship title against Jay Bradley, who also was on the show. And this is good because... It's like everybody that we've had on the show are either they've either been in the ring with each other or they're good friends. <laughs> yeah, I can't say I'm good friends with Jay Bradley, but I can definitely <laughs> say that when he's in the ring with me, he probably doesn't like me because I whip his ass every time. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to talk about that match, uh, Jamin? Yeah, uh, no, it's uh, August 3rd of the Saturday Night Special. I defend my heavyweight title against Jay Bradley. Uh, probably run through him, too. Like, I've been running through the whole TNA roster. I believe it started with Doug Williams, ran over him. Uh, then I ran over Jesse Goddard. When he def- when he challenged me for my title, I ran over him. Then there was Rod Terry recently, who I had an incredible match with. and uh, But unfortunately, nope, I ran over him, too. So And then now we have Jay Bradley, another TNA Superstar, or if they want to call themselves TNA superstars, well, I'm the OVW heavyweight champion, and my name is Jamin Olivencia, and I'm going to run all over him on August 3rd, and I'm going to embarrass him in front of the whole entire audience. And then everyone's going to be still chanting my name, and everyone's going to still be booing him. And at the end of the day, it's going to be a bad day for him. So his little boomstick is more like a dipstick. So that's what <laughs> I have to say about him. Jamin, question Are you a hill or are you a face? I'm I'm whatever you want to perceive me as, you know. I I I like I enjoy I I'll say this much. I appreciate my fans every single day, and they know it. And you know my reaction when I walk out when they come unglued off their seats tells you that. But uh, I also have I also have people that don't like me, and that's okay too. 
because it still motivates me to be the best. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a face. I would say I'm a face, you know. I don't know. I, when I was in California, though, I got booed quite a bit last time for the wrestling care. So uh, we'll see how how they take to me this time because uh, I think they ended up booing me because they were like, oh, who the fuck is this guy? And then I ended up getting cheered at the end because they're, say, they're saying to themselves, holy shit, I want to be this guy. And uh, we'll see how they feel uh, coming up on uh, August 17th as well. So it'll be definitely fun. I actually have a question from somebody from California, um, from Josh Best sure. in the World, 4789. I don't know what kind of question this is or what he means by it. He says, why do you spin? Why do I spin? Yeah, you know, okay, so in my entrance, in my entrance I do a spin when they say Ole Bencia, when they stretch out my name. I don't know why I do it. I do it because that's what came to mind when I decided to come up with it. And uh, I did that back in 06. I decided I was going to do that. I was going to make it a thing. And now it's really a thing. There's, I got kids doing it all the time. I got merchandise that, that spins these little toy things. I, you know, I wish I had something to show you guys. They're really cool. But uh, I don't know. It just seemed to work for me at the time and still works for me to this day. So I have no idea why I do this thing. It's just more of a creative thought in the moment. And that's why I'm the man. Yeah, I want to... Uh, come, um, I want I want to let you know that I I um I told a friend that you're gonna be on the show the other day, and she told me like, oh I know who he is. He's the guy that spins, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be on the show. So, uh, Vicky, if you're listening, shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, big shout out. Thanks for thanks for you know this my describing me as the guy that spins. That's cool. Hey, I'll take <laughs> it. You know, you know, everyone does something. We don't know why they do it, but. That's that's what they just do it because you know why people do certain things like that. You want to know why when John Cena comes out and does the thing with his fingers or you know all these people do these things is because that's who they are and that's why they're so awesome. That's why everyone's so awesome. That's why people get over and they end up getting a, a following because people see this shit and it's like it's they 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 can tell it's genuine. It's not forced. Now you can watch guys who, who do that sometimes and they do this thing and it's like forced and you can tell. You know, you don't quite connect with it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really cool to see guys like Punk who do has their thing. He looks at his watch. And that's just who they are. And I think that's the most raw you can get with, when it comes to uh, watching awesome wrestling from awesome wrestlers. So, entertainers, whatever you want to call us, you know. But, so, yeah, thanks for remembering my spin, sweetheart. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, gentlemen, did you have any more questions? Well, I have one oh. more for him. Uh, I have one more for him. Um, I guess a year, almost a year ago, you were in a raw statement with Daniel Bryan. Um, how, uh, my question is, how, how how did that work out? Um, you know, I was. Uh, I'm trying to think of that day. I think I was just back there visiting. Actually, I think I was visiting that day. Uh, some good friends, and uh, they just asked me. I think they just someone just came up to me and asked me. And then they asked me if I wanted to cut my hair, if I can cut my hair for it. I was like, well, <laughs> I, you know, I, it, was, it was a funny situation because I was like, well, you know, I don't know if I'm going to cut my hair, but <laughs> they're like, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. But no, it was just, it just ends up happening, you know. So and and that happens sometimes. You get back there and and they need extra help, and you know what? I'm glad to help them. You know, that's their their good business, and you know, it doesn't really matter anyway who's out there or who's dressed in what. It, you know, some people are like, oh, that person was on the road, but, it, you know, you're just doing business for them so you can get across the storyline that they're trying to sell, you know. So, yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Uh, did anybody else have any more questions? I'm sorry? Uh, I'm talking to the rest of the guys. No, I'm, I'm done. I don't know about no, Chris, I just it's just it's just a you know it's just a pleasure to, to have this guy on here. He comes you know he, he, it's just great to see wrestlers you know come on here and you know this guy's obviously has his, his, his head on straight. He's 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 got it under control, man. It's just it's just great. He comes across as you know just genuine genuine great guy. Just happy hey, to you guys. Sure. Hey, happy ha- happy to be. You know what my thing is, guys. Is I'm happy to be doing it, and I'm happy that you guys are happy. I'm happy that everyone that is involved in the situation is happy because you know what? All we have is the present moment, and that's right now for the rest of our lives. 
There's no fucking past. There's no fucking future. There's just right now. That's all we have. So as long as you always realize that and, and be happy in that moment, it, it creates overall a positive atmosphere, which is what we've done today so far on this uh, you know podcast and what we're going to probably end it on too. You know, It's, it's going to be on a positive note. And uh, it really is a pleasure, and bringing, God bless all you guys, too, because, you know, you guys are doing something that, you know, you believe in, and it's something that you enjoy doing, and you get people, and you get to interview them, and you get to ask these questions, and you get you get to get a little bit of the inside as well, so what the hell, everyone, everyone really wins, so good for you guys, and kudos for you guys for going out and, and doing this, because it takes balls to do that, and you guys are doing it, so fuck it, congratulations to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate that, dude. I have one more question before I ask you to put your plugs out there. Um, we're working on getting our, our T-shirts made, and hopefully we have them made by by the Wrestling Care Show, and we would like to yep. give you one for free. Uh, what size do you wear, dude? And I don't know, will you wear it? Uh, number one, uh, I wear a medium. Number two, I will definitely wear it. And number three, I will promote it. So we'll, we'll make all those points, you know, now, because I'm saying it now. So when, so when, when, it, ha- when it happens, I'm going to do it. And we can take a photo, and we can fucking throw it on Twitter. We'll, we'll blast it, you know. And for anybody that wants to know more about Jamin Only events here or wants to get a little look into my life, do not be afraid to add me on Facebook. Do not be afraid to follow me on Twitter, because if you are not afraid, then you will walk into something that's fucking awesome. So be ready for that. What's your Twitter and Facebook? You want to let um, our listeners know? Yeah, sure. Uh, That is at Jamin, that's J-A-M-I-N, last name Olivencia, O-L-I-V-E-N-C-I-A, and that is for both, both Facebook and Twitter. So if you can't write down my name or Google me or figure it out, then, hey, that's your loss, but... Way to try anyway. <laughs> Definitely well, Jamin, I just, Jamin, I just, I just followed you right now, Jamin. So there you go. I'm sinister six twenty two. I just follow you right now, so on Twitter. Oh, you hey, well, wait, hey, I'll, you know what? But while we're at it, while we're in the moment, let let me follow you back. Yeah, go for it, sinister six thirty two. That's me. <laughs> All right, Oscar, I got you. Boom, follow, following. <laughs> So now yeah, thanks, man. Oh, thank anytime, any, anytime, anytime. Yeah, follow, awesome. follow me too. Follow Toby for wrestling. Hashtag yeah. fuck Adam Cole. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm awesome. Actually, I'm actually going to tweet you and say you're awesome, so you can know it's me. So. <laughs> Sweet, I got you. I've got you. I'm retweeting. I'm I'm following. We're, we're on it, guys. We're on the same page, all of us. You might as well do the same thing, uh, Chris. I, be, I, I already follow him. <laughs> if you're trying to get a follow, I'm on there somewhere. I'm a, a, a ROH code. I'll, I'll, I'll text you through this, you know. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, again, we want to thank you again, Jamin. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get you back on here uh, when you're the WWE champ. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that would be pretty sick. Uh, hey, I'll, hey, remember this day. I'll do it when it happens. I'll do it when it happens. How does that sound? Or what, what, if I'm TNA now. champ, one of the two, one of the two, yeah. wherever company I go. Just be ready. Just be ready for the interview. Be ready for the uh, the recording, and I'll be ready to start spitting my mouth because I'll do it every single time anyway. <laughs> but uh, hey, look, uh, to anybody out there that's listening to this right now. If you want to do something, just go do it. Do not listen to people that give you their opinions because their opinions ultimately do not matter. So go by how you feel. Go by your gut. Try to be positive. Try to uplift others. Don't be a motherfucker. Don't be an asshole. And you'll find a lot of beautiful things will come to you. So that goes for anybody that's listening to this podcast. And that goes for you, too. So. too. All right, man. We want to uh, thank you for being on the show. I like Anytime, that. Anytime, guys. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jamie.